So we talked about uh, um, solution of, uh, um, of problems for which we need this interpolation. And uh, in particular, we talked about finding the minima or the maxima of a function. That requires that a function is well behaved um, or that it, at least it is um, continuous in the first derivative. So this is where we're now going to use this interpolation. And we will look at, uh, at the following problem. So we know that um, or uh, or, or physical pendulum that this returns a um, period that looks different from the period of the ideal pendulum. So the fact that we use the sine of theta instead of the approximation for small thetas that the sine of theta is equal to theta. So instead of using that approximation we use the exact solution that we can because with numerical differential equations um, or, or numerical methods we can solve the differential equation regardless of whether there's an analytical solution. Um, so our exact solution or our um, uh, solution of the, the correct physical pendulum equation will give us a different period um, as the exact solution for the approximate differential equation. And so what we want to do now is see um, how that, uh, that difference um, depends on the initial conditions. So we'll look at a, a range or a, a set of different values for the initial um, angle theta. And so we'll just pick uh, i between 1 and 10, and we'll multiply i by 0 0.1 times pi over 2. Uh, so this will essentially go from um, 1 tenth pi over 2 all the way to uh, 9 tenths of pi over 2. So we'll use that as our initial um, angle theta. Uh, from there, we will solve our differential equation. We'll, of course, do this at a set of fixed points t, so 30 points between 0 and 3 in units of time. Um, then we will interpolate for those specific initial conditions. We'll interpolate um, the values of, uh, for those values of t and uh, the values of theta that we find as solutions of our differential equation. Um, We'll plot those interpolated values on a much finer grid of 300 points now between 0 and 3. And then we'll try to find the minimum of, uh, um, of this function after one period. That will give us, you know, this will make a lot more sense after I, I plot this, but when we try to find the minimum of our function f neg, which is the negative of our function f that is interpolated, um, let's see, oops, I should have loaded this line here first. So, um, for each of the initial conditions, you'll see that we, we start at different angles here. Um, for a small starting angle, we see that uh, the oscillation also, of course, goes to a different small angle on the other um, side to the negative value. This will be um, minus 0 0.1 pi over 2. And so what we're trying to find is after one period exactly where is this maximum? Where does that maximum occur? And you see there is a dependence on the initial um, angle. The, the, the maximum here after one period for a small angle um, theta 0 uh, will, be, will be smaller, so the period will be smaller than for a large um, initial angle theta 0. So we're trying to find this maximum. What we'll do is we'll just turn the function into its negative with this lambda here. Um, and we'll try to find the minimum, uh, just because, as we know, minimization problems are more common than maximization problems in, in uh, numerical um, methods. But essentially, they're the same, except for a minus sign. So we're minimizing this negative function. We're giving it um, a bracketing interval between 1.25 and 2.25, and the, minim the, the initial value is 1.8. Um, we, we can use different methods for that. We can use the golden ratio search, or we can use Brent's method. Um, regardless which one you use, um, you'll get similar results. Um, and then we'll plot, the, or we'll, we'll print the value for theta zero at which we start here in radians, and the resulting value um, for the minimum. And as you can see, this indeed increases as we start to go to um, higher values of initial angle. 
from 1.62 all the way to 1.85. Um, and then finally what we can do is we can plot this um, so we plot the initial values of theta the initial angle theta zero um, and the ratio <coughs> and the ratio of the period over the ideal period which we've uh, saved here um, in our previous cell um, as uh, the ratio of our, our result over the exact value um, that we obtain for an approximate um, differential equation when we approximate the sine um, of theta with theta. So as you can see, for small values of theta, our ratio of t over the ideal um, t is, is close to one, but as soon as we start to have large initial theta zeros, um, then we start to see deviations at uh, order of 14% uh, in this case here um, from the period that we would have determined for the ideal pendulum. So again, let me remind you what we're doing here. Um, we're using interpolation between the points at which we calculate the solution for the ordinary differential equation such that we can use the traditional methods of minimization um, which require a constant function. And so um, that is why we use these cubic splines um, to uh, describe the solution of the differential equation um, for the physical pendulum.